Hi guys, this is Creevily again with another fountain pen review and today we are going to talk about a Japanese pen which is the Sailor Pro Gear. Now the Sailor Pro Gear is not exactly a very cheap pen, it's not an entry level pen. Sometimes the pricing of this pen is slightly confusing because the pricing depends slightly or the price of the pen depends slightly on where you get it from, if you get it straight from Japan or in Europe or in the United States or something like that. But uh, after a little bit of uh, web research, I think it's safe to say that the pen ranges around 250 euro or 270 dollars or something like that. If you get it cheaper, I'd say that you made a good deal. I got mine from tinteinblut.de, which is the German distributor of Sailor. Um, before we cover the pen itself, let's have a look at the packaging quick. Uh, it comes in a card cardboard box here. I have like an extra fine nib. It has a 20 karat gold nib. It's the Sailor Pro Gear uh, GT fountain pen. Uh, I don't exactly know what... Ah, GT, yeah, it stands for gold trim because it's also available. I mean, the Pro Gear is available in... A, a number of sizes. Uh, there is the regular, which is the one that I have. And then there's the King of Pens, which is slightly larger. Uh, then there's the Sapporo or Regulus. I think they're called Sapporo or Regulus, which are maybe not shorter, but definitely slimmer. Um, and there's a number of finishes and colors and silver trims and gold trims. So the one that I'm reviewing here is the Sailor Pro Gear standard size with the gold trim. Um, it comes in this pretty simple cardboard wrapper box here. Um, the box itself says Sailor, it's plastic, nothing fancy. When you open it up, you find a converter that is provided with the box with a lot of Japanese stuff on it, uh, the provided with a pen, of course, not with a box, in the box with a pen. Um, and uh, it's good that you get a converter with it because like the Sailor converters are proprietary, so they have a, sl a slightly larger opening hole. Uh, the standard converter, standard international converters won't fit. And then you get a your warranty certificate and a couple of instructions on how to fill and maintain and clean the pen and all that. So that's that with the boxing that we can now put away and inside you have a nice little Sailor logo with the anchor here. Okay, the pen itself, the pen itself is made from resin. Um, as I said, I have the one with the gold trims here and uh, those gold trims here that is actually not solid gold, but it's metal and all those gold accents here is 24 karat gold plating uh, on that pen. Uh, the pen itself has a quite classic shape. It's more or less a cigar shape that is capped and I've already shown that in the review of this Faber-Castell pen here that this is actually a quite classic pen design. You find that for example with a Faber-Castell Emotion or you find it with the Pilot Prera that I have here. So it's a it's a it's a very it's a very classy fountain pen design. It's like more or less a cigar shape. The pen is thicker in the middle, tapers down towards both ends, and is then capped off. Very classic, very nice design. You can't really go wrong with that. On top of the cap, the finial, you find the Sailor logo. This anchor, this here is actually it's like I don't know if you can see that if the camera picks it up. Let's see maybe with a white background. Um, it's actually a little bit relief. Yeah, you can see that it's it sticks out a little the anchor. That is actually gold plated brass, if I'm not mistaken. That looks very very nice. Then you have this clip here. The clip also has some kind of accents, some steps down. That is actually very typical also for sailor pens. Let me get a. 911 that I have here as well has the same clip, right? You see that it's exactly the same clip design. So that is uh, just a different size. So that is actually also pretty typical Sailor. Uh, the clip is pretty tight, not too tight. So it's very usable to put the pen in your shirt pocket or something like that. You then have this center band here saying Sailor Japan founded. 1911, so that is a pen company with a pretty long 
pen making history so you can be sure that there's a lot of experience in that pen and that you actually get a nice pen and uh, then it has another gold accent band down here the surface itself you can see that is pretty shiny glossy it is definitely prone to picking up fingerprints um, i don't really mind about that because you can just wipe it off otherwise i find this to be a very very classy very classy and nice looking pen let's uncap the pen the cap screws off like that it actually takes two about two full turns to get the cap off so it's not one of those it's not like uh, a, the pelicans or something like that that just take half a turn or one full turn so it takes actually two full turns to get the cap off the cap seals the pen very well even if you leave the cap pen um, cap for quite a while and you pick it up it starts riding straight away uh, the section is fairly short um, but the threading here is not very sharp and there's not a huge step down so it doesn't actually really matter where you hold the pen i'm pretty comfortable holding the pen like that for writing um, but you could technically also hold the pen like that which will probably be a bit more difficult because um, the pen is not exactly a large pen i'm going to do a size comparison in a minute before we do the writing sample but um, you can actually post the pen it posts fairly deep and secure um, it's because it doesn't become top heavy whatsoever i actually do prefer to write that pen posted for longer writing sessions because it just gives me a more comfortable size then when the pen is posted you'll also be able to hold it a little bit more up here if you prefer it i hold the pen like that find it very comfortable to hold like that very balanced pen doesn't become top heavy whatsoever really really nice for short notes or something like that i prefer to write the pen unposted and what i really like about the pen as said is the size because it's a shorter pen it fits every short pocket so it's a really really nice everyday carry pen let's have a look at the nib the nib is actually a 21 karat gold nib that's awesome because like i think sailor is actually the only pen maker that nowadays still makes 21 karat gold nibs this is a two-tone nib it's 21 karat gold as said the those silver accents that you that you see here are rhodium plated it's a gold and rhodium plated bicolor nib um you see some nice accents here, some little bit of design elements. It says 1911, has the, the founding year of Sailor, has the anchor on it, says 21 karat gold, 875 for the gold content, says then Sailor. And then on Sailor nibs, you usually has a pretty large feet, a decent feet. Um, I mean, this is um, the Sailor, the Sailor nibs normally have their, the nib width engraved here on the side. This is a HEF which stands for hard fine nib and this nib really is hard it's a 21 karat gold nib but don't think that it's soft I mean as most sailor nibs it's very smooth but it is definitely very tactical very feedbacky gives you a very tactical riding experience um, yeah so uh, nib options sailor has a lot of nib options it has uh, extra fine fine medium um, I think medium fine broad and then there's a lot of special speciality nibs cross point music zoom i don't know what sailor really offers a wide wide range of nib options that here as said is the hard extra fine nib uh yeah um what we still have to do is like then there's another gold band here open the pen have a look at the converter that's supplied with it um, that opens that that uh, um, uh, closing mechanism here is very nice because you actually have a small rubber o-ring here which gives it a snug fit like it's now it really tightens so that makes it really nothing wiggles around here or whatsoever this is really nice so once you open the pen you get access to the converter this is as said the proprietary sailor converters as you can see here these don't hold an awful lot of ink admittedly so if you get that pen with a music nib or a zoom nib or something like that that lays down an awful amount of ink ink uh, it might actually be that you have to refill the pen quite often what i love about this particular pen here is that it's an extra fine nib that means it uses almost no ink um uh, which I find amazing because I actually can take a ton of notes with that pen until it finally runs out of ink. Uh, 
Talking about ink in combination with this pen and the extra fine nib, I actually like to use non-shading inks in that pen because the line, as you'll see in the writing sample in a minute that this pen lays down, is actually that fine that you won't see the shading really anyway. And if you use an ink that uh, has a lot of shading, it might actually be a little bit disturbing on the eye. So that's just a small side note and a small detail. Um, let me have a quick look at my notes. If there was something else that I wanted to talk about before we go into the size comparison, I actually don't think so. No. So, uh, as for a size comparison, I may of course compare that pen here to a Lamy All-Star, which is probably a pen that many people have home or a Lamy Safari. And then what else do I have around here? A Twisby Echo which is a slightly larger pen again, and maybe the new Pelican M400 uh, brown tortoise. That is about the same length. So you have sort of a comparison here. So let's uncap those pens for a minute. Mm, you see that? Brown tortoise, oops, no, they're rolling away. the Lamy All-Star and the Twisby. So you see that as well. So as said, the pen actually is on the smaller side. Let's try to post a couple of those ones here. Post that one, post that one. That one is not really meant to be posted. So let's take that aside. And a Twisby, uh, it, does, it doesn't really make sense to post that one because it is anyway a fairly large pen. So as you see, when um, to sum it up, when unposted, the pen is definitely on the smaller side. As already said, I like that because it's really nice to, as a quick note taker and as an everyday carry pen to keep in your shirt pocket. But when posted, you actually get a pen with a very decent nib size. So now let's jump into the writing sample. For that, I'll zoom the camera in a little. Uh, take a paper here. The interesting thing now about that writing sample will be that uh, this is actually an extra fine nib and I mean Japanese nibs always are a size smaller than um, western nibs. So like if you for example have a western medium that would basically compare to a Japanese broad nib. So a Japanese extra fine nib actually really lays down an awful fine ink line, a very, very fine line of ink. Um, as said, that pen here is, the, that nib is very, very feedbacky when writing with it. Sailor Pro Gear, and you can hear that also regular. It's a very, it's a pretty wet line of ink. You hear the feedback, right? You can really hear that. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, wet nib. Um, as said, it's very, it's a very tactical writing experience. The pen gives you a little bit of line variation. I won't overdo that here because I don't want to like spread those fine tines too wide. Uh, so you get a little bit of line variation, which is probably nothing that you should do all the time because the nib is actually quite sensitive uh, in terms of uh, being a very, very fine, uh, fine nib. But it's a super, super pleasant writing experience. Uh, very smooth, but very tactile. Uh, what I would like to do in the end uh, of that writing sample, just to show you how fine the nib actually writes, and because many people are interested in how fine a Japanese extra fine nib is, I have a couple of reference pens here. So I have a Pentel, Pentel Energel with uh, 1.0 ball, that means the ball diameter is 1.0, so the pen lays down approximately a 0.5 millimeter uh, line here. Then I have a uh, 0.5 um, Energel that will now lay down a line of approximately 0.25 millimeters. Uh, and uh, yeah, 
somewhere around that space here of that uh, Pentel 1.0, I have the Stabilo 0.88 with a 0.4 fine line here. And if I now zoom in a little bit and I compare that to the to the sailor with this extra fine nib, you actually see that um, it basically underperforms this 0.25 line width here. So you're probably around 0.15 or 0.2 millimeters in line width, which of course considerably varies with the paper that you use, because now this here is a standard spiral bound notepad. And if you use, for example, a Rodia on which paper the line width is actually approximately cut by half because of the structure and the coating of the paper, you can actually see that the line width is getting even, even uh, thinner, as I said, about half. So, um, I really like that pen as an everyday note taker because like as said, you can take an awful amount of notes with the extra fine nib. I've not tried um, uh, the very broad nib sizes, so I can't say much about that. Um, it's not exactly an inexpensive pen, it's really a value pen, but I think for what you get, the price is really all right. I really like using that pen. So um, I hope that review was useful to you. And uh, as always, oops, I'll see you at the next review. Bye bye.